on to our next presentation. Our next presentation is given by uh, Ms. Uh, Yu Yating, Tiffany, from the East Department of this university. Her presentation title is Media Representations of Leftover Women uh, in China. Nicole is Assistant Medical Studies. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Tiffany, so I'm a student here at Hong Kong Poly U. And uh, you, if by any chances you are working on the same topic, perhaps you can leave me your contact and we can talk more later. And I'm so lucky to have so many experts here to give me comment later. So this is the outline for my talk. So what is leftover women? Leftover women is a term coined by the All China Women's Federation in 2007. And it is, it is listed as one of the neologism by the Ministry of Education. The definition is unmarried female who is older than 27. Why 27? I don't know. But I guess most of us have passed this age. But interestingly, after a decade, the same NGO tried to ban the same term. So this justified the period of my data is between 2007 and 2017. So what is metaphor? Metaphor is to use something to talk about something else. For example here, if we use food, if we compare women to food, then it might imply a negative connotation. So my research aim and niche is to explore one of the latest gender issues in China. And I want to see the ideology here. And as we know, metaphor shape and reflect ways of thinking. However, a few studies have investigated the media representation of level of a woman in terms of metaphor use. As Gibbs pointed out, how metaphor shaped reflective culture were not topics that have attracted much attention. So I have two research questions. Number one, how are metaphors employed to discuss topics related to level of a woman? And number two, what ideologies are hidden? So for my data, I collected from two sources. And very importantly, these news are written in English by Chinese people. And this is the detail of my corpus. There are more than 200,000 words. For methodology, I take the discourse dynamic approach. And for them, the relationship between language and thoughts are two-way interactional rather than unidirectional. And I have taken an emergent perspective within the Sinclairian tradition. So it just simply means like I have taken a bottom-up approach. So just let the categories emerge from the data. And so there are four steps. The first, get the concordance. So these terms are synonym, hypername, hypolemes of women. So I get the concordance. In total, there are nearly 4,000 concordance. And I put them in an Excel spreadsheet. And to identify the linguistic metaphors, because this is a pilot study, so I try to be more open-minded to possibilities. So I try to identify every single metaphor. And so as Cameron pointed out, explicitness of decision is more important than the so-called truth. And so I try to identify every kind of metaphors, even preposition. They could also carry ideology. So in total, I have identified 1,000 1, linguistic metaphors within 800 concordance. So this is a pilot study. 
And the next step is to code, I multiply code the metaphor into different categories. So there are three. So we call grouping. Just, you know, it's just source domain. And I group them according to the semantic field. And for the topics, that just means the, on the content of the ongoing discourse. But it is impossible to refer to infer every single topic for more than a thousand metaphors. So in this case, I try to categorize them into the key discourse topics, which mean there are a few topics related to my question. And for evaluation, I put them into positive, negative, and neutral. And it's important to notice that the evaluation is specific to every single metaphor. So the whole coding procedure is non-sequential, non-linear. And the categories are tentative, loose, and they are temporary at the beginning, and they are only firmed up at the last moment. So as Ken Cameron said, there is no right answer how to appoint, how to assign the category. It is based on informed intuition and supported by the discourse context, supported by some references. So in order to enhance my trustworthiness, I use two references. One, one is a meta build, which is built by Professor Andrew Goldley and his team. And so if I type in a single metaphor, it will show me what is the target domain and what, what is the source domain, and also all, all the meaning. So as a secondary reference, I use WordNet. It will give me all the senses of a word. So um, this is a very comprehensive result. And for the key discourse domains, sorry, of the key discourse topics, I have 11. And for the source domain, I have 21. Um, so this cross tabulation sums up all the frequencies of different kinds of metaphors, and it has confirmed the emergentist perspective. Metaphors are unevenly and inconsistently distrib distributed. And in my case, it is not feasible to run any statistical test. So I try to group them according to the top eight recall groupings. Um, which has occupied 77% of all the metaphors. The next step is to explain the metaphor patterns and ideologies. So um, I borrow the notion from Charter is Black. So ideological metaphors are metaphors that convey a set of values and beliefs, and they are used to define and to um, to, to unite a group. And next, I propose sets of systematic metaphors, which just means like conceptual metaphors. Um, they summarize all the ideological themes about level of women. And last, I try to explain the possible ideological motivation. So uh, these are the systematic metaphors that I have summed up. And I will try to, because time is limited, so I will try to just uh, show a few examples. Um, so for a food metaphor, women are food. Um, if women they don't get married, they are left over. And um, they are telling educated women not to study so hard, not to excel. Otherwise, they are like level of food must be discarded. So as you can see, these are quite negative metaphor. And so I try to sum up the frequencies of all the food metaphors. And as you can see, um, the majority are negative. And for trading metaphor, 
We mean our commodities. Let's see some examples. We mean our commercial product with a limited shelf life. If she has felt herself herself to her husband in a timely fashion. And we mean our commodities. And they are constantly tallied. And their value in the marriage market depends on their age, depends on the look, the color of the skin, and the size of your eyes. So um, for vertical orientation metaphors, this is what Lakoff and Johnson will call more is up, less is down. So um, age is vertical orientation, and the data shows that these women tend to be over age. They are over the age of 35. They are above the age of 27. And second, social economic status is vertical orientation. Their education level and career potential is high. They are high earning career women. So because of these two reasons, they are over age, and also their status is high, so it's very difficult for them to find a husband. Because women tend to marry up, they tend to date up, so the more they climb the social ladder, the upper they are, the more difficult they find someone higher than them. So for vertical orientation, uh, the majority are also 56% um, are negative. So uh, I try to propose three possible ideological motivation behind. So there are three. One is culture. So for Chinese culture, we live in the uh, Confucius culture, which harmonies families and also um, traditional uh, heterosexual marriage prevails in our society. And second, politics. Um, as you know, in China, nowadays we are facing a demographic crisis of aging population and also gender imbalance. So we have way, way more men than women. So in order to encourage these women to get married early, so we label them leftover. And economic. The phenomenon of leftover women has triggered lots of uh, opportunities. For example, like uh, marriage, um, uh, uh, for example, like TV shows, and also some uh, matchmakers. As we all know, the most popular TV show nowadays well, is Fei uh, Cheng you know, it's a dating show. So um, the implication to um, is my my study is to contribute to the field of CDS, Corpus and Sex Discourse Study, on Chinese gender and also uh, metaphor. And I hope to raise the awareness of this social group. And here are the references. And your critical comment will be highly appreciated. I'm just one. I'm just afraid some of the audience might not know what a systematic, systematic metaphor. Systematic, me, systematic metaphor is very different from conceptual metaphor, because a systematic metaphor they believe language and thought are interactional, rather than unidirectional. So for conceptual metaphor, they think thought will influence language, so it's rather unidirectional. So I I, I know the difference, but I just in case they don't know what a systematic metaphor is. So. Yeah. 
but in terms of the methodology, the design, what do you think of it? Because I haven't taken the chart with blacks approach, and most people for this kind of research will take chart with black. So, um, yeah. interactional with regard to a thought and language, so to say. And she has rather kind of bottom-up approach, so to say. Yeah. So she starts from language use and rather um, finds systematic metaphors on the level, on the discourse level and not yeah. on the conceptual level. Oh, totally. Charles Black more argues from a kind of conceptual perspective, from a top-down perspective. So basically, I would, I would, uh, my suggestion would be to... to it's a approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very nice. That's a good suggestion because this is a chapter of my thesis, so I actually have a model. Hello, sorry. So this is a chapter of my thesis, so I have a model combining CDS and uh, metaphor and also corpus linguistics. So the Venn diagram will be the CDS part. So that's a good suggestion. And I also have thought about that because the corpus is only 200,000 words, so it's rather relatively small. Mm -hmm. And maybe I will look into that um, in the future research, you know, to compare this and the future one. Because 2017 is the is the, the year that they stop using this term, so I can see the difference between this year and in the future. Then that would be a good good suggestion.